welcome everyone. I um, wanted to do a quick demonstration overview on how we can leverage data stores within CyberArk Flows to perform various actions um, and where they may or may not be useful. Also, I wanted to provide some tips and tricks that I've seen um, or learned along the way when interacting with data stores. So first off, what is a data store? What would it be used for? Uh, within flows, a data store is typically just a collection of data, um, normally formatted and stored in a JSON format. Now, on the left side of the screen, under the builder UI, you'll see data. Uh, there's various different options that we have here. So first, let's talk a quick moment about how would we typically initialize a data store. Um, there's two primary methods that you can use to do this. One being from the manage view right here. We can click on manage and we can hit add data. Now, if we do it this way, what it's going to do is pretty much create a permanent data store or a data store that will persist until you delete that data store. So when would you maybe use this? Um, an example of using this would be kind of shown right here. In my lab, I have five data stores that have all of the permissions required uh, for certain safe access roles. So in this case, this one's called Role Permissions Connect. If I take a look at this, all it is is a JSON that contains the permissions that in a flow I would send to the safe access API um, to give a user the connect permission, right? So I'm, I'm gonna use this over and over. Let's say I'm gonna come back and need to know that, you know, have this long JSON. I'll just create this data store in advance, save it, and now anytime I need it, I can refer to it by using the read option under Builder. To quickly create one, just to show you what that looks like, we can go over here and hit Add Data. Let's give it a name. So in this case, I've just kind of come up with a option here called HTML Color Codes. And what I'll do is I'll open up Visual Studio Code where I have this JSON containing you know, five or 10 different color codes, as well as their RGB values, their hex values, et cetera. I'll copy the whole thing, come back into flows and paste that in, right? So if I scroll up, you can see it's got that JSON. I can hit add. In a future flow now, I can reference this and get the values out of this if needed. The other cool thing you can see is if I want to, I can edit it right from here. So I can hit edit and maybe add an additional field that wasn't there permanently. Uh, let's say you have like a ton of links or URLs that you would like to reuse multiple times. That may be when you, you use a data store, right? You might create a JSON that just has useful links where there's a key value pair that you can attribute a name to a specific URL or link. Uh, maybe in this case, I need to be able to reference different colors and get the RGB value. Perfect use case. I can do it right now. And now in future flows, I can refer to that. So that's one way of creating and managing a data store. Um, very simple, when I'm done, if I don't need this data store anymore, I can delete it from here um, if I would like. But these data stores will persist pretty much in perpetuity until they are removed. Now, <clears throat> what if I have some data coming in? Uh, let's say I'm calling a flow via a webhook or um, I wanna read in some data from a user and I wanna store that into a JSON, how would I do that? A quick and easy way to do that is just to hit this little create option and add this right here. Now, let's talk about the options we have when doing this. This name is pretty much only important for the flow that it's in itself. So it can be anything. It can just basically describe what the, the data store is for. So let's say it's uh, let's say this flow is triggered by a webhook that's sending some JSON data to me. I could say, you know, inbound um, webhook data store, right? And that will just be, indicate to me that this is gonna be the data store that contains inbound webhook information. Now, I can decide to give this a name, and if I do, there's one key caveat that we need to be aware of. Every time this flow is ran, this data store will be written over. So if I give this data store a name, it will now be written over every single time. The, the data store, the data name is gonna persist and when the flow is called, a new JSON is sent, it will be overwritten. So be careful here. If you have a flow that may be run multiple times and you don't want it to overwrite the existing data, do not give it a name. You can leave this blank. So this is an optional field. Alternatively, you can just give it an empty value, right? So I could say, hey, the value of this data 
is going to be the webhook that's being sent in. Now you would have to define the webhook, or maybe you say it's the body. So in this case, whatever is triggering this flow, whenever this flow is being called via a API call, the body that gets sent in that post is going to be written to this data store. Maybe I just want the data store to be empty. So a really helpful trick here is we can go in and we can just create an empty data store with the open and close brackets. And now this data store can be used later on. So now that we've defined this data store, if I run this flow, we should really expect nothing to happen, right? Because there is no inbound information. Um, if I come up and look at the top, we'll see that the flow ran successfully. Nothing came in. The data store was created. And we can see that the data ID is this uh, long UUID type of number. So if I copy that information and I want to see that data store and I come over to manage, you may notice that it doesn't show up. You're like, oh, I don't see that UUID. A quick tip is just hit this little button here. And now we can see all data stores that have been created without a data name. And if I search for that UUID, I can see that it was just created. If I look at it, we'll see that it's empty, right? So in this case, if I have a flow that's gonna run a lot and it's gonna have data coming to it, I would not get it a name. And be aware that the data ID will be populated or created and that you can still go in and modify it manually if you'd need to. Now, Let's say I want to do something and actually write some information to that data store uh, programmatically. That's super simple. All we would do is pull in the update where it says data ID or name. We can hit data ID name here. We can select the inbound webhook data store, which we already defined, and we'll just select data ID, right? So now this update uh, option knows that it's going to be updating this previously created data store. And if we know or we have a specific schema, we can define that here. Um, we can come in and, and populate the schema. And let's just use uh, the schema that I used earlier. So I'll open Visual Studio. We'll copy this same stuff in. So now that shows up and I save it. Now we can see that the schema is here. Um, in the future, this is very helpful so that we can select these values um, in further functions, things like that. Um, but I can also enter the information right here. So if I paste in that um, JSON from Visual Studio, I can do that and everybody is, is happy, right? So I can save this and now we have this data store populated. And my name is in the way, so let me move that. But I can see here that we have the data store in place. So um, now we can modify or interact with this data, right? So now in the future, if I need to do something where I pull that information in from um, somewhere so I can do like a decision, right? Maybe I create a loop and part of that loop is I loop through the data. So from the values, um, I can go in here and I can select colors. I want to loop through the colors of this array. So if we go back and look at that actual data store, you'll notice that this is an array of colors. So I can loop through and I can go through and just maybe I want to look for a specific color. So I want to try to find red. So I'm looping through colors. And after that, I can do a decision or, or something like that where I populate a form and it says the RGB code for red is whatever that is depending upon that JSON. So this is an example of how I can now loop through that data store that we've populated. Um, this does have a unique name, so you could just call it, you know, um, in this case, like updated data store or give it something unique, but it's going to maintain or keep the same data ID. Again, this name is really only for the purpose of this flow. It's not for um, storing the data store itself. Now, if I'm being careful and let's say I want to clean my data stores up after I'm done with them, at the end of the day, I can do it two ways. One, I can come over here to manage and I can go in and I can show all of my data stores, whether they were created automatically or not, and I can delete them, right? A better method would be if you do not need this data store in the future 
An example of that is, you know, we're only using the data store for this flow. When this flow is done, I do not need it anymore. What we would like to see is just go in and add a delete and find the data name here and go ahead and hit data ID, right? So in this scenario, it's going to read in, you know, write some data to it. We're going to populate some data within the data store. We're going to loop through that data store and perform some sort of action. And then at the end, since we don't need this anymore, we're going to delete it. So this is an example of kind of just cleaning up, making sure you're not leaving stuff uh, that's going to persist in that data store repository um, so that when you're done, that value, those values are no longer there, right? But this will help you kind of keep your, your data stores clean and not just end up with a ton of data here when you select manage. Now, why would you not delete this data? A perfect reason to not delete this data would be if after this is over, you call another flow that needs to reference this data store. Um, the way you would do that is typically passing that in through like a parameter on the, the webhook or the call for the next uh, subsequent flow. And we'll cover that in a follow-up video. But what I really wanted to focus on here was kind of interacting and using data stores and some of those tips and tricks. So to, re to reiterate, you can create data stores in really two ways. One, going into manage, adding it there. Two, creating it here. And again, when you create it, it can be empty. That's a very nice trick. You can just go ahead and put a blank JSON in there. And now later, we can modify this data store. Um, alternatively, you can create the data store and write your webhook, your inbound webhook, right to it. And now if you need to refer to things that came in that JSON body for the post, you can refer to them very easily. Um, the updating these things, super simple. You can do the update from here. You can add data to them. If you need to append data to a data store, unfortunately, you can't do that extremely easily right now. Um, you could do something like a transform where you take the data in, um, you do a string, like create an array to string or do something like that, and then you trim the end of the string off and then add to your data store and then convert it back to a JSON. Uh, unfortunately, that's really the only way to do it right now. Right, so we could do like a JSON to XML and the JSON string would be basically the data store values, right? So we would come in here and, and just select the top level data store. Um, that, would, that would be one way of doing it, but it is a little cumbersome. Uh, so just be aware, sometimes it might be easier to just rewrite or write over the data store in that sense. Um, Lastly, clean up your data stores, right? Delete them unless you need to use them in a subsequent flow. There's not really a reason to maintain those or keep them around. Um, so just clean them up at the end of your flow when you're done with them. So I hope this was useful. Uh, we'll have other videos covering various other functions, but really the whole purpose of this lesson or module was to cover data stores and the various options you have with them. Um, so happy to hear any feedback, comments, concerns, and good luck with uh, all your projects where you're working within CyberArk Flows. Thank <music> you.